I'm really excited about the mixed program because obviously, you know, you think of ballet as being, you know, the big narrative full length ballets, and we've shown quite a few of those on, on the digital program. But this is one of the programs that we've actually got three different works together, and, um, and I'm really excited about that. And two of them, Waramuk and uh, The Narrative of Nothing, were actually commissioned for our 50th anniversary, which soon to be 10 years ago. Hard to believe, isn't that it amazing? It is hard to believe. Yeah. But, um, but each of these works I love because obviously, Waramuk, uh, a, a product that we, a program that we did with Bangara Dance Theatre, created by um, Stephen Page, which um, you know he's a legend um, in the dance world here in Australia, um, with music by his brother David Page, um, and the designs by Jennifer Irwin and Jacob Nash, um, and I think such a beautiful. Um, thing that we've shared with Bangara over the years. Well, Stephen's first work for us was Alchemy yes. back in 1996. Maynard Gilgood commissioned him to do that and then... Um, and that was a collaboration with the Bangara company? No, no, that, oh, was, that just was just us by ourselves, yeah. Yep. So Steve came and created the work for us mm -hmm. but still with music by David, his brother. Um, and then in 1997, Ross Stretton invited him to do the rights uh, to the music of Rite of Spring, which of course became, and that was the first time Genius. the two companies yeah. came together. Mm -hmm. And that was amazing because, you know, at that time there was a real dialogue about, you know, reconciliation and, you know, um, the Aboriginal or First Peoples um, importance in our history that had not been really, you know, acknowledged. Um, it was before the, the um, apology about the stolen generation. It was a really, you know, very tough time, you know, continuing tough time continuing. for our, yeah, our First Nations, but, um, but it was the first time we came together and that was a beautiful thing. And then we did another program, um, which was called Amalgamate, and then we did this production, Waramuk, which was, um, I guess, more of a celebration because it was the first time as a company with Bangara, um, the Australian Ballet, that we did a work that was created to traditional Aboriginal stories. Before that, both rights and amalgamate were sort of generalised things about the earth and the land, and whereas this was actually from the stories of the night sky and included a whole lot of these beautiful um, First Nation stories um, from you know, the source, and, and that, was, that was an amazing experience for us. With fabulous designs too. Oh, Jacob Nash and, and Jennifer Irwin. Yeah. I mean, they're both incredible artists. And, um, and, you know, that's the great thing about Steve and, and the way he works with his creative team. It's such a collaboration. Yep. And, and then working with the dancers from both companies together for the whole time, because previous to that, um, the other two ballets had been created sort of separately. But this one we actually did all together in the studio at the same time. So it really was the next evolution, I guess, of our collaborations with Bangara. And musically, so I wasn't a, with the company for Alchemy, uh, not when Rights was created, but did have the incredible experience of performing that, obviously to Stravinsky and Rite of Spring and one of the most important pieces of music in the history of art, not just of music in terms of the Rite of Spring. But then with this particular interpretation, which was written in response also to uh, other legends and stories, the music originally. So it was really, I think it's a work of complete genius that the version that um, Stephen Page created for Bangara and the Australian Ballet. So performing that was wonderful. Alchemy, no, um, Amalgamate then was a collaboration uh, between Elena katz and another Australian composer who has written works also for the Australian Ballet and David Page, and that was a, a really interesting collaborative process. I think they got on incredibly well and uh, composed an interesting score together. And then this, uh, Warren Mook, was a different process again. So David Page, incredible uh, genius in his uh, history of Australian composition, as well as uh, in the history of dance in this company. and and together with his brother, uh, they seem to take inspiration. They seem to have this unending pool of inspiration but, and that they share, the two mm. of them would inspire one another. But David's, a lot of his composition was done uh, electronically, so created uh, electronically, and very evocative works 
they are. You go into Bangara performances and be so moved by mm-hmm. the music, incredibly um, distinctive uh, musical language. But because we love working also with live music, the challenge was how do we turn what David conceived together with Stephen in his kind of normal compositional process, I think, into something that we could perform live. Something more orchestral. More orchestral, yeah. And that was really interesting and challenging process uh, in all kinds of ways, just to, to realise that live and try and be inside David's head when he would create something, he and Stephen would talk about it, but it was David's product. And then you put an orchestra in a and a conductor and musicians' <laughs> interpretations in there, which are all important part of parts of things and, and, and the exciting part of realising something. Uh, but it, it, it was really challenging for all of us. The end result, I think, was great. And I remember when we took it to New York, the musicians in the orchestra who performed it, the sound technicians who worked with us, all were incredibly moved by this score, by the whole piece, but really impressed. And they don't know David's work, they didn't know David's work beyond what they might have seen in in other Bangara productions but not have performed Mm -hmm. and they found it incredibly powerful and moving experience uh, as did our orchestras when we, um, every time we performed it here in Australia. And it's really technically complex, I remember Mm -hmm. at the time it was like it was recorded content, it was sampled content and it was the live musicians you were sort of like in the middle of all of that, um, sort of directing the path. Yeah. Was that a challenge for you as an artist as well? Yes, because it was, it was about marrying these processes and trying to realise things. Like everything, when we're doing new works, you have deadlines for completion and, and you speak, you know, from my perspective as a music director, you're speaking to the composer and in this case, um, David worked quite closely with uh, an arranger with whom he'd worked in, in other contexts who is very orchestral literate and I would speak to her. Uh, but it was this marriage of what was electronic versus live orchestra in a pit, in a s- recording studio situation, it would have been fine because you would have had click tracks and mm. musicians would have had headphones and they could have been listening to, to the electronic. And the thing about electronic, because it was, it had pulse, it wasn't just sound effects, it was, it actually had a pulse. Now, if not all the musicians can actually hear that recorded content or latch onto the pulse, which they can't unless they've got headphones on, then they would do what orchestras tend to do, and orchestras tend to develop their own rhythm. And you, in ballet, you need to have as much stronger control of that. But it does vary more than if you've got this invariable, here's a, a, a click track going at you know, this pulse and it doesn't vary and you all play along with that. It's like practicing with a metronome as opposed to actually performing. And so that was the most difficult and challenging process in bringing it to the stage. So how we overcame that in rehearsals, then into the theatre, into the pit and got the balance right. and. Uh, managing everybody's expectations, trying to get that all happen. We did actually achieve that by opening night, but the dress rehearsals were pretty fraught. <laughs> and of course, you know, artists who, uh, I always have a huge, I guess you do as well, when uh, as artistic director performing the works of the choreographers, we feel the same sense of responsibility to composers. Mm. And you just want to realise everything that they have imagined mm. uh, and that is our job and in this case because the other elements it was really uh, tough to to deliver uh, so it was it was fraught in a different way for or for different reasons uh, but as for as every time we head head into an opening night but for different reasons we did ultimately work out how to do all of that but even just in terms of technology as a conductor I can't put on headphones in a live orchestral context because I, I'm trying to manage the acoustic result for the audience. So I have to have my ears working acoustically, but I also had to keep track of all of this electronic. So how we did that took a fair amount of practice and getting used to it. Uh, but you know, A, there's nothing like a challenge and B, particularly when it's artistically so rewarding and all of David's music is and was, as was the ballet. Uh, uh, but it, I was really, proud of what we all managed to achieve and my main thing was knowing whether or not David was happy with what we achieved. 
And I think he was. Oh, the he was production was really. beautiful. Yeah, so, yes. So narrative of nothing was the other ballet, and it was a commission for this particular season. Yeah. And um, you were in charge of all of that. Well, it was quite a different kind of commission to uh, Warrenmook, because um, Graham Murphy works in very different ways to some others. In this particular case, he didn't have a brief. He knew he had a commission from us, and he knew he was part of a triple bill. But to Brett Dean, he said, "Make me something. Make me something, and <laughs> write whatever you like," mm. which is what which is what Brett did. Brett Dean being one of uh, Australia's greatest living composers, but greatest composer, incredibly, incredible uh, international reputation, uh, working with top companies around the world. Not as much in dance uh, uh, as others, but in this case, it didn't really need to be. It was work that needed to be this long and he could write whatever he, he, he liked. He actually, what he actually wrote in terms of his symphonic piece, because it was a piece that he, time frames, he needed to be able to use it for a symphonic mm. commission as well, and we and he did. It was actually about bushfires. Uh, the ballet had nothing to do with uh, with bu bushfires, but that's the great thing about music as an abstract art form. You can mm. uh, imagine a whole variety of things to great music, um, and it inspires your ad imagination, and you, we all tell our own stories when we listen to pieces of music. So it didn't matter that, that that was Brett's inspiration or thought or behind the piece. Uh, but he really, uh, Graham said, write me something and then I will create to it, which is what happened. It's a really complex piece of music. Uh, it ended up being for much larger orchestra than we thought we would have been able to fit in the pit. So that create gave us some challenges because it was, it was a piece that had musicians all over the place. It had a string an orchestra in the pit, a string quartet in another room entirely that was being uh, channeled into the pit and the audience. Uh, so a bit like Warren Walk in that there were, you know, electronic components. And then it had stations of other musicians, if you remember the yeah, audience. Yeah, we had to we had to block off seats. So you had <laughs> kind of quadraphonic sound just coming from the acoustic sound as well with a block of percussion and a couple of other instruments sort of mm. couple several blocks of in, in the audience. Uh, which was a great effect, surprised many audience members to suddenly have all of this uh, mm. around them. Uh, so that wasn't part of the original brief, but that was where Brett headed and we, we managed to make all of that happen. So it was a really complex, powerful piece, really complicated music. It's not easy listening. It's not uh, something that if you're you know, doing the ironing at home, you necessarily uh, put on unless you had a really complex ironing and you really wanted to get angry while tackling <laughs> I think but uh, lots of creases a, <laughs> yeah exactly um, but it, it is a piece that you want to come back to and back to and back to which is what what happens with Brett's music there is so much in it that you want to revisit and every time you do you'll hear something different and what Graham responded to I think it's stunning. I actually really love narrative of nothing and uh, and hope that it has a long performance history with our, our company because it's a, we haven't, well certainly in my time with the ballet, in your and my time together, we haven't had that much abstract work and certainly nothing else from Graham, no, I think, in no. that time. He and I think it was, story ballets, it, that was his thing too. He'd done so many of these big story ballets, he wanted to do an absolutely non-narrative work. Hence the Thanks. name, Abstract of Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy. 